In the village of Omago, there lived a princess named Ezine. She was known far and wide for her beauty, which was unmatched by any in the land. Her skin was as smooth as a freshly pounded yam. Her eyes sparkled like the stars, and her hair flowed like the river that nourished the crops. But Ezine's beauty was only skin deep for her heart was as cold as the Hamatan wind, and her arrogance knew no bound. From a young age, Ezine was pampered and spoilt by her parents, King Ezoke and Queen Nkim. They had no other children, and so Ezine was the apple of their eyes. Whatsoever she desired, she received without question. If she wished for the finest clothes, the most delicious food or the most expensive jewelry her parents would move the mountains to grant her wish but with each gift isn't it grew more self-centered believing that the world existed solely to serve her isn't it was not only proud of her beauty but she also held her head high because of her royal blood she looked down on everyone in the village, including the elders who had lived long and wise lives. Whenever she walked through the marketplace, the villagers would bow their head in respect. But instead of acknowledging them, Ezine would turn her nose up and quicken her pace, as if their presence was an offense to her. Her arrogance extended to her suitors as well. Many young men from far and near sought her hand in marriage. Drawn by her beauty and the promise of becoming the future king of Umago, but isn't it found fault with each of them? She called them poor, ugly, and unfit to walk on the ground she walked on. Some were too short, others too tall, some were too dark, others too light. No one was good enough for her. Why should I marry any of these low-life men? She would say. I deserve a man who is as perfect as I am and who can match my beauty, wealth, and status. She would say. As they walked through the village path one evening, the sun was high up in the sky. An old woman carrying a bundle of firewood on her head passed by without greeting or kneeling to her. Ezine was furious as she backed at the old woman. Is it that you are blind? Or these old bones of yours have also shrinked your brain? Did you not see me, old woman? The old woman ignored her. Kneel before me, you ugly thing, she commanded. But the old woman responded, My daughter, you know I am old and frail. I cannot kneel, my child. Shut up! Ezine shouted at her. I am not your child and will never be. Guards! I want you to give her 20 lashes of the whip. She stood there and watched as the guards flogged the old woman. The villagers passed by and watched in horror what the princess that was supposed to protect the community was doing. Her parents, worried about their daughter's future, tried to counsel her. Ezine, my daughter, her father, King Ezoke, would say, Beauty fades with time, but kindness and humility will keep you cherished by all. You must learn to respect others, for no one is perfect, not even you. But Ezine would scoff and roll her eyes. Father, you don't understand. I am not like other women. I deserve the best and I will settle for nothing less, she would say. Queen Nkem also tried to talk sense into her daughter, but her words fell on deaf ears. Ezine, you must be careful how you treat others. The way you insult these men and the elders is not right. One day, you may regret your actions, her mother would warn her. 
Mother, please spare me your lectures this afternoon. Ezine would respond with a dismissive wave of her hands. I will not lower myself to the level of these disgusting commoners. If they cannot meet my standards, that is their problem, not mine. The elders in the village also grew concerned. They gathered in the king's palace one evening to discuss the matter. Your Highness, the elders among them spoke. Princess Ezine's arrogance is bringing shame upon the royal family and the entire village. Must she, be, she must be taught humility before it's too late, they would say. King Ezoke sighed deeply, for he knew the elder spoke the truth. But what could he do? Ezine was his only child, and despite her flaws, he loved her deeply. I understand your concerns, my elders, he said. But Ezine is stubborn. She refuses to listen to reasons. What can we do? What can be done? I am tired. The elders exchanged worried glances, but remained silent. They knew that the princess was beyond their control. One day, a stranger came to the village with his people. He was tall, with broad shoulders and a handsome face that seemed to have been sculpted by the gods themselves. His clothes were made of the finest silk, and he wore jewelry that glittered like the sun. His wealth was evident in every step he took, and the villagers could not help but stare in awe as he made his way to the palace. I have come to seek the hand of Princess Ezine in marriage, the stranger announced when he was brought before the king, Ezoki. His voice was deep and commanding, and it filled the room with a sense of power and authority. King Ezoki was taken aback by the man's confidence and wealth. What is your name and where did you come from? he asked. My name is Obina, and I came from a faraway land in Obuduku. The stranger replied, I have heard of the princess's beauty and virtues, and I believe I am the one worthy of being her husband. Queen Nkem, who had been sitting quietly beside her husband, looked at the stranger with curiosity. There was something about him that made her uneasy, but she could not place her finger on it. What made you think you are worthy of her daughter? she asked. Obina smiled, revealing a set of perfect white teeth. I am wealthy beyond measure, and I have lands and servants at my command. I am also wise and strong, a man who has conquered many challenges. So I believe these qualities make me a suitable match for your princess, Ezine. When Ezine was brought into the room, she was immediately struck by Obina's appearance. He was unlike any man she had ever seen, and his wealth was more than she had ever dreamed of. For the first time in her life, she felt that she had found someone who matches her in beauty and status. I accept your proposal, Ezine said without hesitation and without thinking. You are the kind of man I have been waiting and dreaming for, she said excitedly. The wedding was planned with great haste and the entire village buzzed with excitement. But Queen Nkem could not shake the feeling that something was not right. She noticed that Obina always wore a hat that covered his head. Even when indoors and he seemed to avoid being too close to the fire or bright light. She mentioned her concern to King Ezoke, but he dismissed them. Our daughter has finally found someone she deems worthy, he said. Let us not spoil this moment with unnecessary worries. And also, I have been waiting for this day all my life. I can't wait for her to get married so that I can finally have peace. But my king, 
You know she is our only child. You cannot give her out in marriage to a total stranger. The queen insisted. But the king was about to respond to her when Ezine, who had been eavesdropping on their conversation, burst into the room. If you people did not allow me to marry Obina, I will never get married again. In fact, you will have to get ready to bury me because I will kill myself, she said as she stormed out of the king's chambers. The king looked at his wife. You see, my lovely wife, I don't want anyone to die in my house. Let her go, please. The queen only stared at him with unease. The wedding day arrived and it was a grand celebration. The villagers gathered to witness the union and there was feasting and dancing late into the evening. Ezinne was overjoyed, believing that she had finally found the perfect husband for her. The village were happy because finally the princess would get to follow her husband and leave the community so that they can finally have peace. After the marriage, the king, with a heart full of hope, blessed Ezine and Obina. May the gods protect you on your journey and grant you happiness in your new home, King Ezoke said, placing his hands on their heads as a sign of his blessings. The queen stood beside him, her eyes filled with tears that she could not hold back. Despite her daughter's happiness, Queen Nkem could not shake the feeling of dread that had settled in her heart. As Ezine and Obina prepared to leave, the queen approached her daughter. Ezine, my child, she said, her voice trembling. I pray that you find the happiness that you seek. Remember to always be humble and kind, for those are the true treasures in life. The mother said as she blessed her. But Ezine, her head held high with pride, barely acknowledged her mother's words. Mother, there is nothing to worry about. I am going to a place where I will be treated like the queen I was meant to be. You should be happy for me, she said, her voice filled with confidence. The queen tried to smile, but her heart was heavy. As the carriage that would take them to Obina's faraway land arrived. Queen Nkem reached out to touch her daughter's hand one last time. But Ezine had already turned away, too absorbed in her own excitement to notice. Obina thanked the king and the queen, bowing deeply. Your Highness, I am grateful for your trust. I promise to take good care of Ezine. She will want for nothing in my land, he said, his voice smooth and reassuring. The king nodded his head, feeling a sense of relief that his daughter had finally found someone she deemed worthy. Go in peace, my son-in-law. May the gods favor you on your journey, he said, though a part of him still felt uneasy. As the couple set off, the villagers gathered to see them off. The elders, who had been troubled by Ezine's arrogance, felt a great sense of relief. They whispered among themselves, hopeful that this union will finally bring peace to Ezine and to the land. The villagers too were happy to see Ezine leave. Her sharp tongue and condescending attitude had made life difficult and unbearable for many. And they were glad to be rid of her. They cheered as the carriage rolled down the path, carrying the princess and her new husband away from Omoago. Inside the carriage, Ezine sat with a look of triumph on her face. She felt she had finally gotten what she deserved, a wealthy and handsome husband, a grand life ahead of her, and a future filled with luxury. She did not look back to the village she was leaving behind, nor did she notice her mother's tears as the villagers whispered. All she could think of was greatness that awaited her in Obina's faraway 
land. As they traveled, Obina remained silent, his face hidden under his hat as usual. Izinne didn't mind. She was content to admire the scenery and dream of the life that awaited her. The journey was long and as the day turned to night, they made camp in a small clearing by the side of the road. Obina built a fire and prepared a meal, serving Izinne with the utmost care. Eat well, my dear, he said, his voice soft and gentle. We'll still have a long journey ahead of us. Izinne smiled, feeling pampered and special. You truly are the perfect husband, she said, taking a bite of the food. I knew I was right to choose you. Obina only smiled in return, his eyes glinting in the firelight. As Ezine drifted off to sleep that night, she felt more content than she ever had before. She was certain that her life was finally as perfect as she had always believed it should be. But as the fire cracked and the night grew darker, Obina's smile faded, replaced by a look of something far more sinister. He watched over Ezine as she slept, his thoughts unreadable, his true intentions hidden beneath the surface. Back in Omago, Queen Nkem stood at the edge of the village, staring down the road long after the carriage had disappeared from sight. The king placed a comforting hand on her shoulder, but she could not shake the feeling that they had just sent their daughter into the arms of something far more dangerous than they could have ever imagined. The villagers returned to their homes, the elders to their huts, all relieved that Ezine was no longer their problem. But in the depths of the night, as the wind whispered through the trees, an unsettling silence fell over Omuago, as if the land itself knew that something terrible was about to unfold. The next morning, Ezine woke up to the sound of birds singing in the trees. The air was crisp, and the scent of the dew covered grass filled her nostrils. She stretched luxuriously, feeling the soft blanket beneath her. For a moment, she was disoriented, not remembering where she was. But then, the events of the previous day came rushing back. A smile spread across her face as she remembered her handsome husband, the wealth he had promised, and the new life she was heading towards. Obina was already awake, tending to the fire and preparing breakfast. He looked up as Izin nested and gave her a warm smile. Good morning, my love. He greeted her. I hope you slept well. Izin nodded her head, sitting up and brushing her hair off her face. I did, she replied, still feeling the excitement of her new life bubbling inside her. I can't wait to see your land, Obina. It must be truly magnificent. Obina's smile widened, but there was something in his eyes that made Ezin Nepos. It was a fleeting expression, gone before she could place it. You will see soon enough he said, handing her a plate of food. But we still have some distance to cover. Eat, and then we will continue our journey. As they ate, Ezine chattered on about her plans for the future, how she would decorate their home, the clothes she would wear, and the feast she would host every time in their home. Obina listened patiently, nodding and agreeing with her every word. But there was a tightness in his voice that Ezine, lost in her fantasies, failed to notice. After breakfast, they packed up their camp and continued on their way. The paths grew narrower as they ventured deeper into the forest. And the trees became thicker, the branches intertwining to form a canopy overhead. The sunlight barely penetrated through the leaves, 
casting the part into a dim greenish glow. Isn't this excitement began to wane as the day wore on? The journey was longer and more tiring than she had anticipated. And the forests, once a place of beauty, now seemed dark and foreboding. The sound of the forest, the nursing of leaves, and the occasional cry of a bird, which had in initially been shooting, now seemed airy and unsettling. Obina, she called out as they trudged along. Are we almost there? This forest is making me uneasy. Obina glanced back at her, his expression unreadable beneath the shadow of his heart. We are close, he said, but his voice held no comfort. Just a little further and we will reach our destination. Ezine nodded, trying to shake off the growing sense of dread that was creeping into her heart. She told herself that she was just tired and that once they arrived, everything would be as she had dreamed. But the further they walked, the darker the forest seemed to grow, and the path became more difficult to navigate. The ground was uneven, with roots and rock jutting out, threatening to trip her with every step. After what felt like hours, they finally emerged from the dense of forest into a small clearing. In the center of the clearing stood a large ancient tree, its roots twisting and turning across the ground like the tentacles of some great beast. The tree was unlike any Ezine have ever seen. Its back was dark and rough, and its branches stretched high into the sky, but not a single leaf grew on it. The air around the tree felt heavy, almost suffocating, and the silence was so complete that it made Ezine's ear ring. Obina stopped in front of the tree and turned to face Ezine. We are here, he said, his voice echoing in the stillness. Ezine looked around, confused. Here? Yeah? She asked, her voice trembling. Where is your people? Where is your home? And where are the people? She asks in confusion. Obina did not answer. Instead, he removed his hat, revealing the horrifying truth once more. There was nothing where his head should have been. From his neck upwards is empty. As in the grass, as she stumbled backward in terror, her heart pounding in her chest. You, 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 she whispered, her voice barely audible. You, you are not human. You are not human. Obina, or the creature that had taken its form, stepped closer to her. I am not what you think I am, he said. His voice, now a deep resonant echo that seemed to come from the very earth beneath them. I am a spirit of this land, one that has watched over it for centuries. I came to you because your arrogance and pride had brought great suffering and tears to your people. And it was time for you to learn the consequences of your actions. Isn't they shook her head? backing away until she hit the rough back of the ancient tree. No, 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 no. This can't be happening to me. This can't be happening. I am a princess. I am a princess. I deserve better than this. The spirit's laugh was a low rumbling sound that made the ground beneath them tremble. A princess is a name only, he said. You have shown no kindness, no humility. No love for those you ruled over. You judge others harshly, believing yourself to be above them. But now you will know what it feels like to be powerless and alone. Ezine's knees gave way and she collapsed to the ground, 
her body trembling with fear. Please, please, let me go. Let me go, she begged with tears streaming down her face. I will change. I will change. I promise. I will change. I will be better. Just let me go. But the spirit shook his head. The empty space where his head should have been only added to the terror. It is too late for that, he said. You made your choice, isn't it? And now you must face the consequences. As the spirit's words echoed in her mind, the ancient tree roots began to move, twisting and twiddling like snakes. They wrapped around Ezinne's ankle, pulling her closer to the tree. She screamed, struggling to free herself. But the roots were too strong, and they continued to pull her in until she was trapped against the rough back. The last thing Ezinne saw before darkness overtook her was the spirit standing before her, his body slowly fading into the mist that had begun to rise from the ground. This is your new home, he said, his voice a whisper on the wind. You will remain here, a reminder to all who pass through this road of the dangers of pride and arrogance. And then the world went black. Back in Omwago, the villagers continued their lives unaware of the fate that had befallen their princess. The elders believed that Ezine was gone, continued to guard the village with wisdom and care. The queen, still troubled by her daughter's departure, found solace in the knowledge that Ezine had found a husband who could provide for her. Ezine remained trapped within the ancient trees, bound by the roots that had once held her so tightly. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months as the forest grew silent around her. The once proud princess was now a prisoner of her own arrogance, left with nothing but her thoughts and the airy whisper of the wind to keep her company. But as time passed, something within Ezine began to change. The terror that had once gripped her heart slowly gave way to reflection. She remembered her mother's tears, her father's worried gaze, and the pain she had caused the villagers, and her harsh words and cruel judgments on them. Alone in the darkness, Ezine began to realize the true cost of her pride. One day, as she sat weeping beneath the weight of her regret, she heard a voice, soft and gentle, like the rustling of leaves. Ezinne, it called to her. Do you now understand? She looked up, her tear-streaked face illuminated by a faint light that seemed to come out from the tree itself. The headless spirit appeared before her once again, though now his presence was less menacing, more like a guard than a captor. Yes, Ezine whispered. I was wrong. I hurt so many people. My parents, the villagers, everyone who cared about me. I was blinded by my own pride. And now I see how foolish I was. The spirit remained silent allowing Ezine's words to sink in. After a long pause, he spoke again. The gods are merciful to those who seek redemption with a sincere heart, he said. Your suffering has opened your eyes and you have shown true remorse for your actions. Because of this, I will grant you one more chance to return to your people and make amends. Ezine's heart leaped with hope, but she knew that her return would not be simple. I don't deserve, I don't deserve their forgiveness, she said, her voice trembling. But if you allow me to return, I promise I will spend the rest of my life trying to earn it. The spirit nodded, 
his form shimmering as the light within the tree grow brighter. Remember, isn't it? He said, his voice echoing in the stillness. Humility is the key to a true strength. Go back to your people and show them that you have changed truly. With those final words, the spirit raised his hands and the roots that had borne Ezine for so long began to loosen. Slowly, they receded into the earth, freeing her at last. As she stood, the light surrounding her grew brighter, enveloping her in its warmth. Then, in a flash, everything around her dissolved into pure white light. When Ezine opened her eyes again, she found herself standing at the edge of the forest just outside the village of Omoago, her kingdom. The familiar sound of the village, the clutter of pots and the laughter of children filled the earth. It was as if no time had passed since she had left. Yet, Ezine knew she was not the same person who had walked away in pride. Taking a deep breath, she stepped into the path that led to the village. Her heart pounded with both fear and determination. She knew the road ahead would be difficult, that earning back the trust and respect of her people would take time, but she was ready to face the consequences of her past actions. As she approached the village, she saw the familiar faces of the villagers turn towards her in surprise. Murmurs spread through the crowd as they recognized her. Some looked wary, others confused, but none approached her. Ezine's parents, King Ezoke and Queen came were among the people that saw her. The Queen gasped and rushed toward her, her hands covering her mouth in disbelief. Ezine, is this really you? She whispered. Tears welling up in her eyes. Ezine nodded her head, eyes brimming with tears. Mother, father, she said, her voice thick with emotions. I have returned, but not as the princess you once knew. I have seen the terror and error of my ways, and I am here to ask for your forgiveness. I know I don't deserve it, but I will spend the rest of my life trying to be the daughter the princess and the person you always hoped I would be. The king stepped forward, his face stern, but his eyes softened as he looked at his daughter. Ezine, you have caused great pain with your arrogance, he said, his voice steady. But it takes courage to admit one's mistake and seek redemption. And if you are truly repentant, then you have taking the first step towards healing. Queen Nkem embraced Ezine, tears streaming down her cheeks. My daughter, my child, we have missed you so much, she said. Her voice choked with emotions. Your return is all we have prayed for. Ezine wept in her mother's arms, overwhelmed by the love and forgiveness she had not expected. The villagers, seeing the change in their once proud princess, began to gather around. Their initial wariness giving way to cautious hope. One by one, they stepped forward, offering her words of encouragement and welcome. Over time, Ezine worked tirelessly to make amends for the hurt she had caused. She became a humble and kind leader, always putting the needs of her people first. She sought the counsel of the elders, respected the wisdom of those around her, and dedicated herself to serving the village. With love and compassion, the villagers, seeing her sincerity, gradually forgave her and accepted her back into their hearts. Ezine's story spread far and wide becoming a powerful lesson about the dangers of pride and the power of redemption. She went on to rule with wisdom and grace, earning the love and respect of her people. And though the memory of her time 
in the ancient tree never left her. It served as a constant reminder of the importance of humility, kindness and the strength found in true repentance.